Let's look now at religion. The church, when we talk about the church in Western Europe, it means the Roman Catholic Church, the church uh, headed in Rome. The Archbishop of Rome, he becomes the Pope and claims leadership of the Roman Catholic Church. So Pope, Archbishop of Rome, claims the leadership of the Roman Catholic Church. Okay. Again, with the Pope, he's the guy here crowning Clovis. Okay. Now, in the East, they don't like this idea. In the head of the Eastern Orthodox Church in the Byzantine Empire in the East is a guy called the Patriarch. He is appointed by the Byzantine Emperor, and he, of course, claims control of the Christians as well. Now we've got one guy claiming control of the Catholic Church, which he says includes the Eastern Orthodox Church, and one guy claiming control of the Eastern Orthodox Church and also the Catholic Church. We've got a bit of a problem. Okay, here's our patriarch, the Byzantine Emperor. This is going to lead to a split between the two of them, a schism in 1045. Here's what happens, okay? The Pope claims authority over both churches. The Patriarch, no, not having any of that, okay? The Eastern Church bans the use of icons as any kind of religious, religious image, including uh, crucifixes, uh, paintings of, of Christ, or any kind of religious figures, statues as well. The Pope, however, backs their use. That is what leads to that great schism. Okay. And the split that results because of that, we see on the west side here, the Holy Roman Empire and Catholic territories here in orange. And then we're going to see over here in blue, the Orthodox Church or the Eastern Orthodox Church. Uh, later, we're going to add another wrinkle to this with the Reformation and add Protestants to the mix. So going with the church, let's look at this idea of monasticism. That's the living life as a monk, who is, of course, someone who separates himself from human society in order to devote his life to God, because there's too many distractions in society. Now, monks will later form uh, important functions. As I said earlier in class, uh, monks represent a sort of Christian ideal, hopefully for behavior, but later they're going to provide schools and hospitals, uh, and they'll teach crafts and agricultural improvements, and because they're teaching things, they're now no longer not in contact with the people. They're actually in contact with the people. Now, some of them will work in a scriptoria, and scriptoria are going to be very important because here's a monk uh, in a scriptoria uh, drawing pages by hand for a book. In fact, what we see here is, in fact, a illuminated manuscript. This is a manuscript where he's copying the words here, flowery decorations all done by hand, and in this actual first letter here, the monk has drawn himself at work in the scriptoria. Well, what's he doing in that scriptoria? Why are these important? They're important because they're preserving the ancient works of the Greeks and Romans. Think of all those philosophers, all that philosophy they figured out, Plato, Aristotle, Socrates. Without these guys preserving some of that, uh, on the Byzantines as well, uh, and the Muslims as well. But in Europe, in fact, what is preserved there is preserved by monks. Okay, our monks, these guys lived in monasteries under an abbot. They made vows of poverty and chastity. They live a simple, self-sufficient life until life comes calling upon them, as I mentioned earlier. Now, sometimes also women got involved in this as well. Now, women were not monks, they were nuns. Nuns live in convents as opposed to monasteries. As opposed to an abbot, we have an abbess. Okay, they also live in seclusion from society. They also devote their lives to the service of God. Okay, both, however, see society come to them. They both provided education and medical services. They were leaders in the call for religious reforms later on. Uh, they're good at agriculture and trade, so they're training people in that. And they also provide the spiritual purpose of the forgiveness of sin so that one can get into heaven. Hey, that was the answer to a short answer question. Religion in the church, finishing up here, the ideas of some things. One is the idea of an ordeal. That's a physical trial to determine guilt or innocence with the idea that God would intervene on uh, for the innocent and not let them be found guilty. Uh, now, this is used originally uh, in church things, but also by the Germans um, before they're even um, Christians, and it's sort of co-opted by the church to form this idea of struggle by ordeal. Now, there's going to be a constant struggle in Europe between the church and the state, the state being the king and things, 
for power, who's in control. We talked about some of those issues before. Now, the biggest one of these comes to head in mind. A great example is the example of Thomas a Becket. Now, Thomas a Becket, he's the Archbishop of Canterbury. He opposed Henry II on where clergy could be trialed. They want to try them in a church court, and he wants to try them in the civil courts. Well, there's an issue over that, and of course, Henry doesn't like this. Okay, now Henry may call, uh, he is the father of King Richard and King John, who, uh, by the way, both rebelled against him when he was when they were younger, uh, eventually succeed him. Uh, and Henry II is also that guy who marries uh, Eleanor of Aquitaine. Uh, we call that lady who got divorced and then eight weeks later married uh, William II, and that's because they were already plotting that well before she ever got divorced. Okay, so... Henry gets mad at uh, Thomas of Becket because he appoints him as Archbishop of Canterbury, thinking that he will follow uh, whatever he wants him to do because I appointed him. In fact, Thomas actually sort of becomes very Catholic and sort of opposes the rule of Henry II. The result of that is Henry gets mad. Some knights overhear how mad he is at this supposed phrase that, well, someone rid me of this meddlesome priest. And, well, they go in and uh, rid him by taking uh, big swords and hacking part of his skull off. That's not very Christian. Okay, that's where to end now. Finish up later with the Byzantines and the Crusades in yet another video.